name. Let's continue to worship Him, my dear God. Praise God.
precious Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. This is your night, your night, your night. For the oil to flow. For the oil to flow. For the Holy Ghost to move. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. And let the anointing of God hit you. From your head to your toes. Let the fire burn you. Let the water wet you. Let the dove perch upon you. Let the wind shake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Aya Sabahodia. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory to the King of Heaven. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, O God. Hey, dear Jesus. Hey, Mama Masandia. Yes, 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 yes. bless you clap your hands and give him the high praise in the house give him the high praise in the house ah. give him the high praise in the house give him the high praise high praise the high praise glory to Jesus Hallelujah, 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 dear God, 
This place is charged with the power and the presence of Almighty God. Welcome all of you again, my dear wife, Minister Davis, ministers, others on the platform in the audience, and all of the saints of God, those who might be visiting with us, and certainly those who are viewing us from wherever, and at whatever time it is in your local, we are happy to have you. Well, tonight we are in for another wonderful time. It has already begun. The pace is set. And if you stay in tune, it will continue to flow in your direction. I'm going to invite you to stand with me, please, for the reading of God's word. I'll get right into it. Our reading comes to us from the book of St. Mark chapter 16. The 16th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. And we will commence our reading at the verse 9. After the reading, I'll pray a prayer. Invite you to put your Bibles down and to put your hands together and have a moment of celebration of praise before I open the word. Mark 16 from verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that he had been with him. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. They, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Gracious Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that thou once again wilt be pleased to tabernacle with us, Lord, as we gather around your word tonight. I pray that the anointing of God will make it quick and powerful to all of us. And I pray, Lord, that the powers of hell will be broken and defeated and destroyed. And every person in my audience here and now and even later will be touched by your mighty power. We rebuke Satan and his demons in the name of Jesus. And we speak liberty for every person in the service. And I pray that the oil will flow as it ran down Aaron's beard, even to the skirts of his garments. Please, Lord, let the oil of God flow tonight. 
Let everyone be touched and be soaked with the latter rain. If you come in fire, let somebody be burned. If you come in the wind, let somebody be shaken. If you come in the rain, let somebody be soaked, oh God. If you come in the dark, let somebody feel the winds of the dark tonight. But oh God, we pray that you come as it pleases you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put down your Bibles, put your hands together. And give a moment of celebration of praise. Go right ahead and celebrate Him in your praise. Let God, if you would open your mouth. Glory to God, hallelujah. Let the oil flow. God bless you. Please be seated. Dear God, I speak to you tonight on this theme. A church on the cutting edge. A church on the cutting edge. We have oftentimes heard that statement when we relate to persons or things that are operating optimal, uh, fulfilling its true potential and touching lives, touching people, making a difference, contributing in various ways. We oftentimes declare or describe that particular situation as being on the cutting edge. And this message tonight is intended to address that particular theme. A church on the cutting, cutting edge. This, I believe, speaks to a church that is relevant. Now, you may ask me, can there be an irrelevant church? Well, let's move on. A church that is relevant is one that is actively and effectively certainly efficiently fulfilling its purposes both to God and to man. If a church is fulfilling its purposes, its mission, its mandate as given by God and as fleshed out unto man, then that church indeed is on the cutting edge. It is a church where the ministries of God's apostles and Prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers are in full manifestation. In other words, it's a church that has the full flow of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16 tell us that our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen, He gave some apostles and some prophets. He gave some evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till all of us come into the unity of the faith of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, and unto the measure of the fullness of the statue of Christ. And he said, when that is achieved, we will no longer be children tossed to and fro with divers winds of doctrine. But we would be grounded and sober and settled in God. Give him praise. The church on the cutting edge is a church where the fruit of the Spirit is building the pure and holy character of the believers. Believers are not built up in carnality, nor in self, nor in the flesh. 
But a church on the cutting edge, I repeat, is one where the Spirit of God, amen, is building. The fruit of the Spirit is building the pure and holy character of the saints of God. Means therefore we will walk as he walked. We will talk as he talked. We will live as he lived. Somebody give him praise. Galatians chapter 5 tells us from verse 22 what the fruit of the Spirit is all about. The fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is not only love but joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and temperance and meekness and faith. And the Word tells me where these abide, there is no law. No condemnation, no reproach, because you are living in the Spirit. Can you give Him praise? Hallelujah to the Lamb. God is looking for a relevant church in this age. And to be a relevant church, I repeat, we must be fulfilling our purposes and our mandate from God to God's people. And I believe as we observe times and season, there are those of you who might agree with me that we still have some journey ahead of us in order to become the church on the cutting edge. The church of today still has a long way to go in order to fulfill God's mandate given to us Amen. And to his people, tell somebody we still have a long way to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. A church on the cutting edge is one that modeled, amen, the first century church that was birthed in the upper room where we call, amen, Pentecost or the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 tells me that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the believers were all together in one accord, in one place. One accord, one place. One accord, one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The sound that came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The Bible tells me that it filled all the house in which they were gathered. And when, amen, the sound, the reverberating sound of the Holy Spirit filled the house, it did not stop there, but cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon them, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. God was preparing a church to take on the world. He was preparing a church to take on principalities and powers. He was preparing a church to take on the demons of darkness of this world. He was preparing a church that would stand militant in this world. And he knows that for that church to take on the powers of hell, it must be a cutting edge church. And the cutting edge church cannot be a dead, cold, dry church. It got to be a church wherein the fire of God is burning. Not just on the pulpit or in the choir loft, but the fire of God must be burning everywhere a believer sit. The fire of God must be there. Everywhere a believer walk, the fire of God must be there. Every time a believer talk, the fire of God must be felt. Can I preach from this house tonight? And I believe that the time has come when the world want to see more of the manifestation of a cutting edge church in this age and time. Somebody give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. God is not looking for a church that conformed to the world. He is looking for a church that is transformed. He is not looking for a church that wants to fit in the status quo and to have the approval of men. He is looking for a church that he can stamp with his seal. 
put this signature on you and said go forth in my name and let the devils of hell know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world I want to tell somebody tonight that the time has come when we got to be branded by the Holy Ghost, stumped by the Holy Ghost, sealed by the Holy Ghost, so the world can see and know that we are not just ordinary normal people. We are come to them in the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody praise God in this house. We need a cutting head church. To confront this demonic world. Somebody lift your hand and say help us Jesus. Hallelujah. So we want to go back to Pentecost. Pentecost was not just for a few among them. Pentecost was for everybody. The 120 that gathered in the upper room. Not one was exempt. They all were filled with the Holy Ghost. They all spake with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They all had the manifestation of the powerful mighty God. It happened because they were on one accord in one place expecting the same thing to happen. Dear God, I don't know what some of you are expecting tonight. Some of you come expecting a financial blessing. You come expect physical healing. You come expecting your families to be healed. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But honey, I want you to put that as item two on the agenda. And put item one on the agenda. God, I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I need an anointing from my head to my toes. That when I walk, demons tremble. When I talk, demons tremble. Wherever I go, somebody must recognize that I've been to Calvary. I've been washed in the blood. I've got fire in my hands. Fire in my feet. Fire in my mouth. Fire is coming out of my belly. For out of your belly shall flow something that is not ordinary. Somebody shout in this house. Somebody shout something in this house. The devil wants to call up the church. He wants to call up the believers. So we can't take him on and put him where he belongs. But in the name of Jesus, there are a few in Sardis. Amen. Who are going to strive for the higher calling. There are a few in Sardis who wants to be prepared to run through their troop and to leap over their walls and to bring down their Goliaths. You cannot do that if you're not a cutting edge believer. You got to be sharp like a razor. God Almighty, somebody praise him in this house. Hallelujah. That's what the first century church was. It was a church on the cutting edge. A church that would not compromise. Give God praise in this house. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I feel God's going to sharpen somebody's blade here tonight. I feel God's going to sharpen somebody's tongue here tonight. I feel God's going to sharpen somebody's spirit here tonight. I feel God's going to pour liquid fire. Liquid fire from the crown of your head onto the soles of your feet. Somebody lift your hand and say, pour liquid fire. Hallelujah. Echo Shama Masandia, Alabo Koshatarabu, Echo Moshanda. My God Almighty, somebody's touching me here. I said, Somebody's touching me here. Echo Shemando Rabu Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A church on the cutting edge. 
is a church whose message is relevant. It's a church whose message is timely. It's a church that has the message for times and season. It's a church that speaks the mind of God regardless of what the world wants to say. It is a church that models the spirit of men like John the Baptist. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Oh God help me in this house. It's a church that models the spirit of Jeremiah the prophet. Oh hallelujah. It's a church that models the spirit of Isaiah the eagle hide prophet. Those men spoke the mind of God. They spoke from the authority of God to kings and peasants alike. And they had no fear. These days the corruption is so deep in the society that God, if you're not careful, even church and church people get mixed up in certain things that you've got to compromise your message. You've got to compromise, but in Jesus' name, the word still says, come out from among them. The word still says, be he separate, said the Lord. The word still said, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. The word still says, in a great house, there are all types of vessels. Honorable vessels and dishonorable vessels. But if a man, if a woman, if a boy, if a girl, purge himself or purge herself, there shall be vessels unto honor, sanctified, set apart and ready to cut for the glory of God. Lord have mercy. For that to happen, somebody got to be willing to spend some time at an altar. Somebody got to be willing to lay aside some stuff. Somebody got to be willing to lose some friends. Somebody got to be willing to pay a price. Lift your hand and say, help me, Jesus. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Somebody shout something down there. So a church on the cutting edge must have a relevant message and a timely message for all times and season these days. It would appear as though the world is dictating to the church. And it would also appear as though we are actually modeling, tailor making our messages, our programs in order to get the world's approval, in order to attract some people. But listen to me, a cutting edge church has one message. You take it or you leave it. Oh, can I preach the truth here tonight? Hallelujah! The message of salvation, the message of sanctification, the message of holiness are clear messages that the cutting edge church preaches. And it does so whether people hear or whether they forbear. Somebody praise God. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist came and he proclaimed the message as sharp as a two-edged sword would cut. He told them, you are a generation of vipers. And if you are going to flee from the wrath to come, you must bring forth some fruit meat for repentance. Somebody give him a praise down there. These days we hardly hear the word repent because everybody becomes righteous in their own way. Everyone has a form of godliness. Dear God, help me tonight. A form of godliness. But where the power is concerned, they deny the power thereof. A cutting edge church is a power packed church. Talk to me somebody. Now let me hasten on to say 
Amen. A church can only be a cutting edge church when it is comprised of cutting edge believers. And I will repeat. I don't care what church it is. The name on the, on the building, whatever programs it carries, it can only be a cutting head church when it is made up of cutting head believers. And cutting head believers are not part time Christians. I don't feel I'm going to preach to somebody here tonight. Come on, you part time Christians. Come on, you part time lovers. Cutting edge believers, I repeat, are not part time Christians. They are full time Christians. Wherever you see them, they are blood washed. Wherever they go, they are blood washed. They are not afraid to identify themselves with the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel and the sanctity of the gospel and the holiness of Jesus Christ. These days, we have too many part-time lovers. Too many part-time Christians. I better preach it like I know it ought to be preached because oh we are so holy in our special days and we are so holy when we put on certain apparel once you have your songbook in your hand and your Bible in your hand and your hat on your head and your tall dress or short dress and head to a church door you, you feel like you're Christian but dear God, when some of you get out of there, God doesn't want any part-time lovers. He wants full-time lovers. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noonday, Jesus in the evening, Jesus at night, Jesus downtown, Jesus uptown, Jesus in period, Jesus in the market, Jesus in the kitchen, Jesus at the workplace, Jesus a foreign, Jesus a country, anywhere you are, you must be a Jesus freak. God help me. You cannot have a cutting edge church unless it is made up of Mm. Cutting edge believers. That's the reason why they could not hinder the believers of the first century church. The more they persecuted them, is the more they stood up for God. The blood. The head of John the Baptist taken off him in prison did not stop them from preach. Somebody say something here. The crucifixion of most of the disciples did not stop them from preach. The beatings they received did not stop them from run with the, running with the gospel. These days our believers can't even take a little persecution. They have no spiritual spinal cord. They are weak like a jellyfish. Every little thing come against them. They are ready to back down. You don't want heavy truths here tonight. Mm. Somebody talk about them. They ain't coming back to church. Cutting edge believers are believers that will endure. Believers who knows that when you are persecuted falsely for Christ's sake, you should rejoice and be exceeding glad. Somebody praise God in this house. Hallelujah. The message of the cutting edge church 
is a message of salvation is a message of healing is a message of deliverance it's a message from the very heart of Almighty God give him praise I saw one cutting hedge believer face all kinds of persecution they could not find anything against him except against the law concerning his God they went to old king and said oh king we're going to put something in place to honor you if any man be found within a certain time making request of any other God save of thee O oh king sign a decree seal it with it with your ring stamp it according to the laws of the Medes and Persian so that it haltereth not such an one must be thrown in the midst of the lion's den in the midst of the den of hungry lions such an one should be thrown and the Bible tells me that when the cutting edge believer named Daniel when he knew that the decree was signed God Almighty oh, some of you ain't getting this when Daniel knew that everything was in place for him to be thrown in the lion's den if he called on Jehovah God. He said, I'm going to show you that a winner never quit and a quitter can never win. I'm going to show you that the God whom I serve is bigger than this universe. Echo Boshanda. The Bible tells me he opened his windows towards Jerusalem. He said, I will not become a secret disciple. I will not hide my testimony. He opened his windows towards Jerusalem. And three times per day, Cutting edge believer, cutting edge, cutting edge. Touch your neighbor and tell them God's looking for some cutting edge, cutting edge, sharp, fire brand believers. He opened his windows towards Jerusalem and he prayed. And when the hypocrites saw him, they always are hypocrites watching some of us. They don't even recognize that they have what to watch more than us. Are you not saying anything? But the Bible tells me the wicked watch it, the righteous. Mm, and gnash at him with his teeth. But God shall deliver the righteous. For no weapon that is formed against the cutting edge believer shall prosper. And every ungodly tongue that rises against them, God will take charge of them. When the king found out that Daniel was a man, oh God, that was found in this, the king's heart pained him, but he could not reverse the decree. But when you are cutting edge, you are cutting edge. Prison bar can't hold you. The angels will tear it down. Can I preach in this house tonight? I said, when you're a cutting edge believer, prison bar can't hold you. The angel will come and tear them down. When you're a cutting edge believer, God will deliver you. Hey, glory. Somebody praise God in this house tonight. Hallelujah. So they brought the cutting edge believer. And they threw him in the lion's den. The lion could not touch him. While Daniel slept at his among the lions, the king could not eat his night's meal. Neither could he have a good night's sleep. He paced the floor all night. Amen. He Daniel was not in trouble. He was in trouble. Early morning the king came over. The 
Whoa, Daniel. Your God whom you serve. Has he been able to deliver you? Daniel said, Oh, King, live forever. Live on forever. For my God has sent his angel. Mm. Give the lions lactra. Are you not saying anything? Listen, if God ever touches injection needle in some of your lion's jaw, You lions fighting against the people of God. Don't let the Holy Ghost inject you with God's injection needle. God will lock your jaw. Cut you off. Daniel walked out of the lion's den without a scratch on his body. King said, all right, let's see something. Bring those men who threw Daniel in the den. Bring them and their families. Let's see if it was an accident. Let's see if the lions have been converted. They are no more carnivores. They are converted. Let's check them out. But there's a difference between the clean and the unclean. There's a difference between the holy and the unholy. There's a difference between the righteous and the unrighteous all the time. When they threw them in the lion's den, the Bible says before they hit the ground, the lions made a mastery of them. Break their bones and thread them to pieces. But cutting edge Daniel walked out with his hands raised. With his hands raised. Somebody praise God in this house tonight. That's the reason it pays to walk with God. It pays to be on fire for God. It pays to live for God. Hallelujah. I could have told, tell you also about three cutting edge Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know their story. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody praise God in this house. We need a church that's on the cutting edge. Now, now hold on. If you preach this message in America, some of you folks might be there watching me right now. They will think it is a church that is well established, a church that is big in media, a church that has all the creature comforts. That's a cutting edge church. In Revelation chapter 3, God found a church like that. Oh, God help me. God found a church like that. The church said, look what we've got. We got everything we need. We got television. We are on internet. We are on radio. Different places. We got the, a massive congregation. We got wonderful this and wonderful that. And the church people say, we don't want nothing more. We are satisfied. We have made it big. God looked at the church and said, you think you got it? He said, you do not even know that you are miserable. You are wretched, you are poor, you are blind, you are naked. How can I preach in this church? God said you want to be a cutting edge church? Come by of me. Come to my feet. Come let me purge you. Come let me wash you. Come let me sanctify you. Come, let me fill you with the Holy Ghost. 
It's not about material things. It's not about fame and fortune. It's not about popularity and prestige. It's about the anointing of God. Hallelujah. It's about the glory of God. It's about the power of God. It's about the presence of God. Tabernacling with the believers. When a church is really and truly on the cutting edge, not one sick person should walk in there sick and leave out there sick. As a matter of fact, if the dead come in contact with that cutting edge church, the dead stand a great chance to be raised back to life. Oh, some of you are saying nothing. But these days, what do we want? We want the temporal and material blessing. Forgetting what the scripture says that we should seek ye first. Tell your neighbor, seek ye first. Oh God of heaven. Prioritize. Get the thing in proper perspective. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek his righteousness. And he said all the other things. Lift your hand and say, Lord, make me a cutting edge believer. Say it again, Lord, make me a believer on the cutting edge. Dear God Almighty, if the Holy Ghost would grant that request tonight. Cutting edge Christians are not conformists. They are non-conformists. In other words, they don't look like the world and dress like the world and walk like the world and talk like the world and act like the world. They are imitators of Christ. I can understand some of you, my brethren, you know. Because I see you in church. Some of you. And you look a certain way. But dear God, when I meet some of you on the street, if I don't recognize you, you have to see with me, you know. Now please see with me if I do not recognize you. Because you, you are so different. Oh no. There, there's a, a word that they used earlier days. I don't, I don't know the full meaning of it, but I think I have an idea. So I'll use it. I hope it's in proper context. Some of you are fifth columnists. Excuse me, please. Spiritual bandulo. You know I'm a preacher, truth. Spiritual bandulo. it appears as though you take your shape and your color from whatever surrounding you are in. You change with the environment. You change with the place. You change with the time. You change with the season. Any good goal doesn't change. You're going to change too. That's the reason why the power of God is not manifesting in the church as it ought to. Because believers are double-minded. Still between two opinions. World or church. 
but I don't want to give up the church entirely. So let's, let's try to have the best of both worlds. Honey, you cannot have the best of both worlds. You got to be willing to deny yourself and take up the cross and follow Jesus and pay the price for a good salvation. Somebody praise God in this house. To maintain a good salvation, you have to pay a price. You cannot maintain a good salvation while you are still gambling and stealing and smoking and lying and drunking and all kinds of stuff. Oh, you get quiet. There's no good salvation in that. You've got to be willing to deny yourself. Somebody praise God here. Cutting edge believers are believers who are willing, I repeat, to pay the price. So they can get the price. Dear God, help us. We are not conformist. Romans 12 and verse 2 says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Cutting edge believers are spiritual people, not carnal people. For to be carnally minded, Romans chapter 8 verse 5, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life. And peace. You don't want life. Do you not want peace? Become spiritual minded. Cutting edge believers. Are faithful supporters of God's church. Cutting edge believers do not forsake the assembling of themselves together. And so much the more as we see the day fast approaching. Hebrews chapter 10, 25. Cutting edge believer would want to be in the presence of God's people as much as it is possible. Oh, praise God. Somebody praise him down there. Cutting edge believers are people who are willing to go the extra mile. Not even counting the cost. Are you not with me? Go the extra mile. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Cutting edge believers will sacrifice in order to maintain a good relationship with Jesus Christ. These days, it's an anything go situation. And burdens are being placed on those who are trying under God. To keep the temple lamps burning bright. Some have begun to feel lonely. Lonely. And the weight and the strain and the pressure is coming to bear upon the few in Sardis. Who refuse to defile their garments. You're not saying nothing. The few... I don't know how many people had populated Sardis. But that church in Sardis, God says, I, I found just a few. Are you with me? I have found a few in Sardis who refuse to defile their garments. And God knows in Christendom today, comparatively speaking, the few are under the pressure. The few are those who rise up early and sit up late, burning the midnight oil. The few are those who are faithfully supporting the work of God with their prayer and their fasting, with their holy living, wanting the power of God to be resident in the place of worship. The few who will turn down their plates Without even being asked to do so. The multitude even when they are asked to do so. Refuse. 
to make that sacrifice. God wants a cutting edge church to take on the world. And you do not become a cutting edge believer living like the world, doing your own thing. You become a cutting edge believer when you surrender all to Jesus Christ and pray like Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. Father, I would to go another direction. I'm not up to this Calvary stuff anymore. But it's not about me. God help me. Lift your hand and say it's not about me. I want to preach to somebody here tonight. God, I want to go my own way and do my own thing. That's the natural gravitation of my flesh. But it's not about flesh. It's about the spirit. It's not about my will. It's about thy will be done. Glory to God. Mm. So whatever you're doing, Lord, I want you to do it in me. Wherever you're going, Jesus, I want you to go there in me. Whatever you got to say, I want you to say it through me. I yielded myself to your tender embrace. Oh, God help me in this house tonight. Cutting edge believers, we need some more. Firebrand. I feel God coming through for somebody here tonight. Cutting edge believers will never be satisfied to be at the ankle nor the knee nor the no loins. No ankle nor knee nor loins. Cutting edge believers want the full flow of the anointing of God. Baptize me from my head to my toes. Baptize me in fire. Baptize me in power. Baptize me with the oil of your anointing. Cutting edge believers will say more about Jesus would I know. More of his grace to others show. More of his saving fullness see more. His love who died for me. Not when they are in church, but wherever they are. There come Hoshanda Rabahu. Somebody help me bring this message to the heart of those who need it tonight. Make no longer vain excuses, believers. The Holy Ghost calls. He calls you now. Come! Everything is ready. Everything is ready. Calvary is waiting. Calvary is waiting. The oil is melted in the horn. But God's looking for a worthy candidate. The oil is melted, but he needs a worthy candidate to anoint. I must say that again. Samuel's on. Sebo Robo Shakata. Samuel's on. is melted. Melted. God is waiting for a worthy candidate. Too many have come, but they are not worthy. Shama and Abinadad and all the others have come. They are not worthy. God is waiting on a David. God help me in the south. Help me in the south tonight. Ramanaiko Shekotia. Mayo Shama who sent up. Waiting on a David to come from the sheepfold. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Motobo Shatai. I feel God in my soul here tonight. Holy Ghost! Cutting mm. edge. Cut! Cut to the bone. It's what God needs in this hour. The days of empty professors are over. The days of make belief is over. The days of outward appearance is over. I repeat, Samuel's horn is melted. Melted. Cutting edge believer. The cutting edge church is a church that knows something. How does it know something? It knows something because its members of the revelation gifts operating in their lives. A church that knows something. The word of wisdom is there. The word of knowledge is there. It knows, it knows, it knows something. The discernment of spirit is there. That's a cutting edge church. So no little demons can come and take over pulpit and take over platform and take over this. A cutting edge church knows what's happening. Because word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerned in the spirit is operative. A cutting edge church. Not only knows something, but it says something because its members have the vocal gifts. Diverse kinds of tongues. So a cutting edge church is a speaking church. Interpretation of tongues and the gifts of prophecy. You want to be a cutting edge believer? You have to know something in the spirit. You have to be able to say something in the spirit. I am a share of a home. Somebody worship God in this house. God Almighty, some of you are dead like a door. Nothing move you. You ain't going nowhere, but you're just taking up space in the church. It's time to get on fire for God. Tell God you're sick and tired of the mess. You want to be a part of the message. Oh, God help me in this church tonight. Cutting edge believers. Not only know, do they know something, not only do they say something, but cutting edge believers are believers who do something because the believers have the power gifts. So they not only say and know, but they do something. They got the gifts of faith. They have the gifts of healing. They got the gifts of the working of miracles. Any church, including this one, who doesn't have the ability of the knowing, the ability of the saying, and the ability of the doing, as the Holy Ghost gives it to his church. A church that has lost its relevance. I'm talking about church. I'm talking about you. 
I'm not talking about this massive structure. I'm not talking about your church house. I'm talking about you. Your body is the temple of the living God. You, I'm talking. You, you. Are you me? I talk. Are you? I'm not talking about the person beside you. I'm talking about you. Are you a cutting edge believer? Are you bringing it down? Somebody lift up your hand and say something. Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. Every cutting edge believer has the unction of the Holy Ghost upon your life. 21st century need nothing less than a church that is on the cutting edge not because of modern technology those first century believers they had no such thing as these modern technology right now people from all over the world can be watching us here in Jamaica modern technology that's not what makes us a cutting edge church. Oh no. A close. A cutting edge church is a going church. G-O-I-N-G A going church Are you going for God? Stand with me everybody please A cutting a cutting edge church Is not only a going church But a cutting edge church Somebody lift your hand and say something A cutting edge church is also a growing church, growing, grow in grace, grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Are you a growing believer? Or are you some stagnant spiritual dwarfs? Excuse me, please. Fed and fed and fed and overfed and not manifesting growth and maturity and development. A cutting edge believer is a going believer, is a growing believer. And finally, a cutting edge believer is a glowing believer glowing the glory of God is upon you the halo of his presence are around you when you walk you feel his anointing when you talk you feel his anointing he's not goosebumps you feel his anointing thou anointest my head with oil Dear God, if we will ever get back to that place. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. It's time to go for God. It's time to grow in God. And it's time to glow. Glow. Jesus. Cutting edge. Do you want to be a razor sharp believer for God? Look at what the text says. I stop right here, really. 
after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven. And they went everywhere preaching, teaching, God working with them, confirming the words with signs and wonders, miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. That's a cutting edge church. Hallelujah. 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 Let the oil flow. Let the oil flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you can reach out, touch a place on the inside that no human could ever touch. Lord, <laughs> you can mold me and make me and use me so I give up. Oh, what I never want to give up. Oh, Lord, please speak to me. For I have been longing to hear from you. From your throne of love. Jesus, let me see your glory. That I've been longing for. Till my soul never get enough of the glory. Lift up your hands in His presence. We got space for some people to come down here. Raise your hand. We got a massive altar place down here.
some of you come here tonight? Why did some of you come here tonight? Honorable who came some of Move of the Holy Ghost. There is a shaking. There is a troubling of the water. Why not step in? Nayorokanaya. I feel the Holy Ghost waking up somebody.
glory. Hallelujah. Those who are standing, and you got someone close beside you, I want you to hold that person's hand and raise them up like this with somebody. Come on. Hold somebody's hand and raise it up. Raise them up, hold them there. I'm going to pray a prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we all hands together right now. And I pray that as I have declared the word of God tonight, that in agreement we hold hands, that every believer will as of tonight become a believer on the cutting edge, a believer that knows something, a believer that says something, a believer that does something, Believers that have the anointing of God resting upon them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, let not one escape the power. Let not one escape the anointing. The oil is melted in the name of Jesus. Let those David come forth and receive the anointing of God. In Jesus' name, I speak it tonight. Oh, God Almighty, release supernatural power. Stand in my power. Echo go shandar baha. Healing, saving, miraculous power. Oh, God, let them take on the world. Let them take on principalities. Let them take on everything the devil throw at them, God. Make them more than conquerors. Let there be no defeated ones. In the name of Jesus, let everyone mount up with wings as eagles. And from tonight, in the name of Jesus, I decree upon this congregation. I decree upon those on the television. I decree on those viewing on the internet that the power of God will rest upon them. They shall no longer be Christians, mediocre Christians. They shall be cutting edge fire brand believers in Jesus' name. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I speak it for you Oh my God don't lift up your hands so don't open your mouth and give God praise give God oh yes give God praise some of you better release it right now you better release it right now you better release it tonight. You better release it tonight, 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 tonight. Oh, my God Almighty. Oh, yes, 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 yes. seat praising God. Hallelujah. He whispered sweet peace to me. Oh, he whispered sweet peace. 
give him the eye praise in the house of God. Clap your hands and give him the eye praise right now. Come on. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. God bless you all those who have shared with us tonight. The 21st gathering of Let the Oil Flow. The blessings of God and the peace of God be with you. And do remember God is looking for a cutting edge church. And for him to have a cutting edge church, he needs cutting edge believers. Make yourselves available. And he will anoint you for such a time as this. God willing, we'll meet again for another let the oil flow which will be the 22nd gathering in the will of the Lord God bless you see you again put your hands together everybody for everybody on the outside God bless you God bless you thank you Jesus